In this ReWorld Engine tutorial, we will take a look at the speed and physics properties of a part, such as velocity, angular velocity, and custom physics settings. First place a new part in the workspace. With the part selected, look in the Properties panel for the Physics section. The velocity is the speed setting for each axis of the part. For example, if I change the x-axis to 10, the part will move along the x-axis at that speed. And likewise, if I change the y-axis to 10, then the part will now move upwards as well. The gravity setting will control how fast the part will fall back down. Let's have a look at the angular velocity. The angular velocity will rotate the part on the specified axis, the applied force on this axis will make the part rotate or spin. I'm going to reset the angular velocity back to zero, and then test what happens if the part is anchored. Scroll up in the properties panel and click on anchor. With the part anchored, the part doesn't move. However, the velocity setting will affect other parts that touch this part. So when I run over this part, the part's velocity setting on the y-axis, is applying force to my character, which launches me into the air. The velocity of a part, will affect other parts that come into contact with it in your game. For example, when I add another part to the workspace, and place it above the other part. Now when I run the game, the sphere will fall down onto the other part and bounce back up. This is useful, say in your game you wanted to have a trampoline, that players could jump onto. Well first you could search the material box, to see what's available. And look there is a trampoline already made. We can add this to our workspace, and then add our bounce part to it. First, let's make sure all the parts inside this trampoline model are anchored. And now, I'm going to place our bounce part inside the model, and into position, and then make it transparent. Rename this part to Bounce, so that I can identify this part later. Scale and position the Bounce part. And now change the transparency to zero to make it invisible. Then I can move this part inside the trampoline model, since it is now a part of that model. To do that, just click the part name in the work bar and drag it as shown. Now, we can run this game to test if the trampoline works. When the player touches the bounce part on the trampoline, it launches the player into the air, based on the velocity setting of the bounce part. Okay, let's look at some other velocity settings. This time for the velocity, I am changing the X value to 5, and anchoring the part. Let's see what that does. As you can see, when my player touches this part, my character is getting pushed along the x-axis at the velocity of 5. Running against it, is a bit like a treadmill. This can be useful in your game, if you want to slow players down, or speed them up. If I change the part's angular velocity to 30 on the y-axis, and unanchor the part, it will spin like this. Now let's see what happens when I slow the speed down and anchor the part. When the part is anchored, instead of the part moving, the force is applied to any other part that comes into contact with it, including your character. So here my character is spinning around instead of the part. Some of the other settings that affect the physics of your parts are how large your part is, shown here as mass, There is also an area to add your own custom physics settings. Simply expand, the custom physics dropdown and you can change the density, friction, bounciness, and friction weight by changing the values here. That completes this part's physics tutorial. Thank you for watching this ReWorld Engine tutorial. Stay tuned for more ReWorld tutorials. See you in the next one.